All right, let's get started with lesson three, the periodic table of elements. In this lecture video, we're going to look at the overall organization of the periodic table. So we're going to go a lot more in depth than what we have done in previous classes this year. Start out with, elements are arranged in groups or periods. Each group of elements is related um, to each other with similar chemical or physical properties. In other words, what we mean by this is that we take elements and we put them in groups based on their similar chemical properties, mainly. Um, some of their physical properties, but mainly by chemical properties. So groups are found going down the periodic table in vertical columns. There are 18 groups numbered 1 through 18 on the periodic table. And the horizontal rows, row, row, that goes across the periodic table, left to right, is called a period. Um, there are seven periods, numbered one through seven, on the periodic table. Uh, you might even look at your own periodic tables and get them out, and you can see those occurring there. All right, atomic number. Atomic number is very vital for the element, uh, as you'll see in the weeks to come. By definition, the atomic number is the number of protons that an atom has. Every el element has a different atomic number. Therefore, they have a different proton number. For instance, hydrogen has an atomic number of 1 because it has 1 proton. Carbon has an atomic number of 6 because it has 6 protons, and so forth and so forth. Okay? Um, mass, the atomic mass. By definition, the atomic mass uh, of an atom of a chemical element is expressed in atomic mass units. It is approximately equivalent to the number of protons and neutrons in an atom. And this is known as the mass number. So in other words, the mass number is the total number of protons and neutrons. All right. So just kind of get that definition in your notes and think about it. Um, we'll spend a lot more time on atomic mass in the weeks to come. All right. Now, this is the big take-home message right here. This is what you have to understand about the organization of the periodic table. The modern periodic table of elements is organized across, that's going from left to right, across the period by increasing atomic number. Vital, important, okay? Increasing atomic number going across the periodic table. On the other idea is that the elements are organized into groups based on their chemical properties, which we've mentioned earlier. Okay? Big take-home message right there. All right, so let's take a look at this a little bit closer. Here's the modern periodic table. Now, going across uh, the periodic table, we have the group numbers here. So group 1 and 2, group 3, 4, all the way to group 18. And again, those groups are expressed in our columns here, vertical columns going down. And one more time, the reason why we've grouped these elements together right here is because they have similar chemical properties. Uh, group 18 elements that you see over here, those are grouped together because of their similar chemical properties. Same thing with group 17 and so forth. Okay, So hopefully that you kind of get the picture of that. You're going to see these properties um, throughout the years, we discuss each one of these groups and uh, your, their uniqueness, uniqueness and their unique abilities. Okay, so what about periods? Well, um, first of all, let's identify the atomic numbers. The atomic numbers um, are up here. These first numbers. So hydrogen again is one, helium is two, lithium has an atomic number of three, beryllium four, um, boron five, and so forth. So those are the atomic numbers. So when we're thinking about the organization of the periodic table going left to right, it's based on these atomic numbers increasing. So period one is right here, period two, period three, period four, period five, six, and then finally seven. Periods going across like so. So in the first period, we have hydrogen and we have helium that make up that first period. And you can see that the atomic number is increasing as we go from left to right. So we go from 1 to 2. Same thing with period 2. So we go across. We have an increase in atomic number from 3, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then ten. Okay. So again, as we go left to right across a period, we're doing so by increasing atomic number, and that is how the periodic table is set and organized. Okay. So what about these unique elements that are down here at the bottom? Uh, where do they belong in the periodic table? Well. Um, down here, the lanthanoids here, they actually belong to period 6. And the aconites are basically belong to period 7. Um, they actually kind of fit right here into the periodic table. And so why do we remove them? Well, we remove them because they have their own unique set of chemical properties. Um, so they just don't quite fit there very well. So they're, it, they're better off by themselves. And we'll, we'll kind of discuss that in time a little bit more in class as well. All right, so modern periodic table again. Here's some things that I highlighted on here that we need to know, okay? First of all, the periodic table is also divided into metals and nonmetals. The metals are on the left side of the periodic table, and the nonmetals are over here on the right side of the periodic table. There is a dividing line between the metals and nonmetals, and that is a unique staircase here that, I'm, that you can see bolded here. It's just this staircase. You need to know where that staircase is on your periodic table, um, and it will always be between the element boron and aluminum. So that's where the staircase begins and then you just kind of follow it down and make that staircase. So everything to the left of that staircase is a metal and everything to the right of that staircase is a nonmetal. All right. Now there's a few elements that fit along that staircase. Some odd unique ones and those ones are called metalloids. Um, the ones, the metalloids that I want you to be held responsible for in this class are the ones here listed. Boron, silicon, germanium, and antimony. Metalloids are elements that, are, that have both metal and non-metal-like properties. So they haven't quite made up their mind what they want to be. Do I want to be a metal or do I want to be a metal? Non-metal? I don't know. I will be both. All right. So those are what the metalloids are. You need to know those. I will test you on those. Um, on your AP or IB exams, they also do test you on the metalloids that you understand what they are and uh, who they are, okay? Um, the one thing I do want to mention is hydrogen. It's over here. It is the sole nonmetal that is on the metal side. So hydrogen really is a nonmetal. Sometimes, actually, we put and we, um, hydrogen fits a little bit better um, being over near group 17. Um, and sometimes you're going to actually see hydrogen fit right there in group 17. Um, or above it in some periodic tables. Uh, most periodic tables will definitely put it over here in group one. But it is a non-metal and not a metal. All right? So those are some things to think about. All right, so as far as metals, non-metals, and metalloid properties go, there are some basic things or ideas I want you to, to be able to have down. The majority of the elements found on the periodic table are metals. The metals are, again, located on the left side um, and around the middle of the table, with the exception of hydrogen, which we just talked about, which is considered a nonmetal. The nonmetals are located on the far, oop, that should be not left side, that should be, oops, go back, let's make that correction, that should be right side, right side of the periodic table. Uh, a few of the elements are separated again from the metals and nonmetals that would be like bo uh, boron, silicon, germanium, and antimony and they're the metalloids. Metalloids are complex elements. They have both metal and nonmetal properties. Okay, So just kind of know those basic ideas. Now, this table, let's quickly fill in. These are some property comparisons, just some general property comparisons. There's no um, quantitative numbers here, just qualitative ideas. Okay. Um, so metals. Metals have high densities. They have high melting points, high boiling, very high boiling points, really. Um, very hard to boil metals. Uh, do they conduct electricity? Absolutely. 
metals, they're great at conducting heat, which is why we use them to cook with. Um, they are malleable. The word malleable means that they're bendable, shapeable. We bend and shape metals in all sorts of arrangements. Reactivity, they're very reactive with nonmetals. If you look at the nonmetals now, they are completely the opposite of the metals. They have low density, low melting points, low boiling points. They do not conduct electricity. They will not conduct heat. And they're very brittle. Brittle meaning that they crumble. They break apart. So if they're in the solid state, they're, they're going to they're gonna just crumble and brittle. You can't bend them. You can't shape them because of their brit they're so brittle. What do they react with? Well, they react with the metals. Um, they're very highly reactive with metals. Properties of metalloids, well, they have a mixture. It depends on the metalloid, but they're going to have um, properties that fall in between the metals and the nonmetals. All right. In your study guide here, you have a periodic table that looks like this. You're going to do a little activity, homework assignment at home, where you're going to color code your periodic table. Um, you're going to use colored pencils, um, so just pull out some colored pencils and use them to fill this periodic table in with the correct um, groups. The groups are down here, um, just so you're aware. Uh, these are the special group names, the alkali metals, um, al um, alkali, uh, alkali earth metals, the halogens, transition metals, and so forth. Now, so some of these groups, like group one, for instance, has a special name to it, and they're called the alkali metals. So you're going to color in the, oh, I forgot, hydrogen is not an alkali metal, remember, it's a non-metal. So you're going to color in all of the alkali metals in group one. The group two are known as the alkali um, earth metals, and so you would color all those in a different color, and so forth. So on this next slide here, I actually have it color coded for you, so you can use something very similar to this idea. So we have the alkali metals, um, again, which are along this group. You have the alk alkaline or alkali earth metals that are here. Um, transition metals are all in the middle of the periodic table. The halogens, the noble gases, um, these are considered other nonmetals, all right, that you can see right here, the other nonmetals. Uh, these are considered other metals. Um, and then down here you have your lanthanoids and the alkanoids and so forth. So just color code it, label it so that you know these different group numbers, okay? And we'll just check this off in class and give you a little bit of a homework score on completing this assignment. All right, so this is it for this lecture video. Um, please study it and prepare for a quiz that will be over this, okay? So that is it for now.